Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem max area of an island. This is actually very similar to another problem that we have solved called number of islands. It's pretty much the same uh, general algorithm, but we're returning a slightly different result rather than counting the number of islands. We're actually going through every island and figuring out which one of them has the max area and then we're going to return the max area of any of these islands. So the general idea is the same. We're given a 2D grid where zeros represent water, as you can see they're blue, and ones represent land. And of course an island is gonna be, you know, consecutive one values that are connected either horizontally, right, like from the left and right side, or vertically, so up and down. You know, two uh, cells that are connected diagonally don't really count. So, you know, if I add one here, uh, you know, if this was a one, it would still uh, basically this and this are not connected. They're not an island. They're separately an island. This is a separate island. This is a separate island. This is a separate island. And this is a separate island. So there's really two parts to this algorithm. First, you need to be able to get the area of any given island. And you can do that with your graph algorithm of choice. I prefer doing it with the DFS, depth for search. So understanding depth for search is a prerequisite for this problem. And the good thing is, if you do have a good understanding of DFS, then this problem is pretty easy. All you really have to do is kind of understand how DFS fits into the context of this problem. And in this case, it's actually pretty simple. So I'll be walking through DFS and then walking through how we can apply that to this algorithm. So running DFS on an island such as this one. So suppose, you know, we start here. We, want it, we see that it's a one value, right? That means it's an island, but is the area of this island just one itself or are there other cells connected to it that are also land? And if there are, we want to run DFS in all directions to basically count how many cells are connected. So the way DFS works is we're gonna run DFS above, which we see is out of bounds. So DFS is a recursive algorithm, and since up above we're out of bounds, the DFS is gonna return zero, basically telling us that the area of the island in the above direction is zero. Similarly, on the left and right side, it's not out of bounds, but this is water, so it doesn't count as an island. But of course, when we go down, we see we reach a one, and this one has not been visited so far, so so again, uh, we reach another one value cell. And again, recursively, we're going to run DFS in all four directions. So going to the left, which is water. So don't do anything there. Going down, which is also water. Don't do anything. We're also going to go up above, actually, even though we've already visited that cell, which is kind of a problem. We don't want to have to go and run DFS recursively on a cell that we've already visited. So the way in DFS to get around that is to have you know, some kind of data structure, we can call it visit. It's gonna be a hash set. So using this hash set, we can kind of mark the positions that we've already visited so that we don't end up revisiting them. That will help us with the time complexity of this problem. And the last direction from here is to go right where we see that yes, there's an island. So, uh, you know, we, we run DFS from this position as well. We look up, nothing there, down, nothing there, left, we've already visited that. Right side is unvisited. So that's the last cell. There's, you know, in all other directions, there's nothing else. So after running DFS on this island, what did we get? What do we want our DFS to return? Well, of course, we want to know the area of every one of these islands, right? That's the only reason we're even running DFS. So DFS from this island should return the value four because that's the area of this island. Now it probably makes sense how DFS fits into this problem. Once you get good at writing DFS, DFS becomes trivial. All we have to do is figure out how to apply it to this problem, and it's pretty simple in our case. We're gonna run DFS on every single island, and then you know keep track of which one of these has the maximum area. As you can see, this one has the maximum area of six, so we're gonna end up returning six in this problem. Now, how are we gonna run DFS on every single island? The easiest way to do it, since we don't know which cells are zero and which ones are one until we actually look at every single individual cell, that's exactly what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna start at the top left, look at every single cell. If we see a one 
value, we're going to run DFS on it and figure out the area of that island. If we don't see a one value, we're going to skip it. So we're going to have, by the end of it, we're going to have visited every single position and run DFS on every island. So we will know which one is the maximum. The only problem is, what if we run DFS on this position and then we run DFS on this position? Won't we get the same exact area, won't we run DFS on the same island twice? Well, no, and that's the reason we are using our visit set because we don't want to run DFS on an island multiple times. So at this point, you can probably see that the time complexity of this problem, since in the worst case, we're really only going to be visiting each a cell, you know, a constant number of times. It's not going to be, you know, exponential or anything. The time complexity is going to be the size of the entire grid, which uh, we're given is M by N. So in that case, the overall uh, time complexity is going to be M times N. And that's also going to be the memory complexity because remember, we are having a hash set, which could uh, in the worst case contain every single cell in the grid. Uh, and of course, DFS is recursive, so there's a call stack associated with it, but uh, this is going to be the memory bottleneck, the hash set. So the time and space complexity is going to be big O M times N. That's enough for us to now jump into the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. If you've seen any of my graph videos, you probably know I like to solve all these problems in a very formulaic way. The first thing I like to do is just get the dimensions of the grid because usually it comes in handy. So let's get the number of columns and the number of rows in the entire grid. The only other uh, data structure we're going to be needing is the visit hash set. So let's declare that above. And now we want to write our recursive DFS function. I like to just write the DFS inside of our root function because in that case, we won't have to pass in every single parameter. All we are going to be passing in is the position that we're going to be visiting. So RC is going to be the row column that we are running DFS on. We won't have to pass in the visit or the grid itself. And with DFS, we always want to handle the base case first with all recursive functions. Uh, one base case is if we go out of bounds, how do we determine that? Well, if row is less than zero or a uh, row is too big, it'll be too big if it's exactly equal to the number of rows that we have. Uh, or, you know, the same thing with the column, if it's less than zero or it's equal to the number of columns. Uh, and there's two other cases, remember. One is if we reach water, we don't want to run DFS on water. So if the grid column position is equal to zero. And last but not least, we don't want to revisit the same position. So if the row column pair is already inserted in our visit hash set, then we don't want to revisit it. So in all of these cases, what do we want to return? Well, remember, our DFS is trying to calculate the area of every island. In this case, we didn't find an island, so we want to return zero. And after that, don't forget to add uh, this a row column pair to our hash set to indicate that it has been visited. And after we do that, we want to calculate the area of uh, this position, right, of this island. How are we going to do that? Well, the current cell that we're at is going to count as one of the area values. Uh, and the other positions, we can pretty much run DFS on uh, all four directions, right? So let's call DFS passing in, how about row plus one uh, column, right? And we can actually just copy and paste this four times. So let's do that. This can also be done with like a for loop to go through all four directions, but I just prefer writing it out. It's not too much code and it's pretty easy. So we just wanna replace these with all four directions. So another direction is row minus one. Another direction will be column plus one and another direction will be column minus one. So that's all four directions. So each of these DFSs is, is calculating the area of the remaining portion of the island in each of these four directions. Then we're adding all four of them up, including the one cell that we are currently visiting right now. And once we've added all those up, all we really need to do is return it because that's what our DFS is trying to do. Just uh, return the area of the island if it hasn't already been visited. 
So now that we've written our DFS, we've pretty much solved the entire problem. All we really have to do is iterate over uh, the entire uh, grid, which we can do just like this, nested for loops, going through every row, going through every single column in the grid. And actually let's maintain a single variable. Let's call it area, or you could call it the result. Initially, it's gonna be set to zero, right? This is the max area that we're maintaining. Uh, every single time we call our DFS, we want to potentially update the area if it's greater than the current area. So we're gonna take the max of the current area and the max uh, of the DFS call that we're gonna be doing on the row column pair that we're currently iterating through. And once that is done, we will have the max area. So all we have to do is return it. Uh, and last, let's run this code and make sure that it works. Okay, I was very dumb. Uh, we forgot to add the plus sign to each of these. I don't know how I forgot that, but let's not forget it. So yeah, so in case it wasn't clear, all we're doing is adding all four of these together adding it to the one as well. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works. And it's about as efficient as we can get for this problem. I will say that one other optimization you can do is you don't actually need an external visit set. You can actually just use the grid itself to determine if you visited a position or not. But we're not guaranteed that we can write over the input grid. So I don't think it's a big deal to use a hash set. I guess you could clarify with your interviewer if you really want to, but it's just a small optimization that isn't a big deal in my opinion. But I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you'd like to further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.